Well, hello, my name is Ryan DeFranco, and my presentation is on youth resistance training. I get all these out here to y'all. What I have in my hand is pretty much recommendation in injury prevention for the youth athletes. So my objectives for this presentation is to discuss potential injuries associated with use of youth resistance training athletes and then prevent preventable measures um, to reduce injury and then provide resistance training guidelines for youth athletes. It all started with this controversy of youth resistance training athletes around the 1970s. It was said that clinicians believed that the injuries for youth athletes were uh, wouldn't impact growth in bones while they were growing up. This was largely associated with just the weights being placed on their body and the initial stress, as well as the quality of machines. Uh, it's not the same as we have it right now. They didn't have as good as equipment as we do currently. And then, um, like I said, one of the topics I wanted to discuss was potential injuries seen in youth athletes. Uh, the, ma the majority of them are the epiphyseal plate, the lower back and shoulders. The epiphyseal plate is also known as the growth plate, if for those that do not know. And it's a plate of cartilage that connects the end of the bone to the shaft of the bone that allow growth in the length of the bone. Uh, the injury for the lower back is associated with uh, weak abdominals, uh, so young athletes uh, who begin a resistance training program do not have strength in their core will see a potential injury in their lower back. And for shoulders, since the shoulder is a fall and socket joint, they have a lot of range of motion. There's, it's pretty much the only joint in the, in the body that um, provides this kind of range of motion. Go whatever way, whatever direction you want to go. Um, I have a picture showing where the epiphyseal plate is. So if someone doesn't know where it's at, uh, the actual epiphyseal plate doesn't close for females until the, about the age of 18 and then 20, 20 years of age for males. Going to uh, this slide, it's actually associated, it's an organization that's called the National Electronic Inj or Injury Surveillance System of the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission. It's also known as NEST. Um, the organization of it allows them to make nationwide projections of the total number of injuries related to exercise and exercise equipment. Their reported injuries are associated with uh, dropping weights or walking into weights, but the actual cause of the injuries are inappropriate training techniques, excessive loading, poor, poorly designed equipment, uh, ready to access equipment, and then lack of qualified supervision, which, um, like I said, they're the actual cause, but they're not reported as the actual cause when they're going through uh, the NEST system. Um, so to, to prevent these uh, types of injuries, there are a few ways that we can go about it. Uh, two of the most important ones are warming up and cooling down. Uh, for warming up, there's Two basic movements, you have dynamic stretching and movement, and this should be done before types of training for the young athletes. It should be done in about five to ten minutes, uh, the appropriate time to do it. Uh, it allows for improvement in strength and power. It also increases reaction time and force development, but also it increases um, uh, blood flow to the tissue, and by doing so, this is what we really want for these young athletes. It actually prevents injuries, so we want them to be able to, uh, whatever type of activity they're doing, be able to incorporate these movements. So for example, hops, skips, jumps. By doing so, we're able to get the blood circulating throughout the body and get enough blood circulating so that Injury does not occur. As for cool, or cooling down, you have static stretching, which is the most beneficial when after a workout. Um, but if you do it before training, 
there is a chance that it will decrease strength and power uh, in the young athletes and we do not want that since they're trying to increase their strength and power by working out and doing some type of, re some type of resistance training. And then after training, of course, we need it because it improves flexibility, which will also decrease the risk of injury in the young athletes. And then, of course, it just relaxes the body. And so I mean, we need to relax the body after a hard workout. So for youth resistance training guidelines, there's actually no minimum age for a, a youth resistance training person to begin, but the training frequency is two to three times per week in non-consecutive days. So for example, we want them to have on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Tuesday and Thursday, just so they have initial rest in between each training session. This will prevent uh, injury from occurring as well. And then proper prescription guidelines for it needs to have eight to 12 uh, exercises targeting all major muscle groups. So front and back needs to have a muscular balance in between training, training types. And then one to three sets per exercise Going back to this one to three sets, it's been proven that one set of an exercise is, is almost as beneficial as three sets are. So if the individual can't perform three sets, then just to make them do one so that uh, they're not potentially going to injure themselves. And then lastly, of course, we need the resistance, um, eight to 12 reps. So with near perfection form, and last for the recommendations, is supervision. Uh, proper supervision is needed for uh, decreasing the risk of youth resistant uh, injuries. And of course, you know, make sure that you assist them and watch them and look, make sure that they're not uh, failing completely so we don't have anyone getting hurt. And then supervisors allow for uh, better better technique and then possible feedback of the athlete. Going to the su proper supervision, the supervisor needs to make sure that the individuals are prepared for resistance training. They need to make sure that they are physically and mentally prepared, uh, but if they are, potential benefits that come from physical uh, attributes include increase in muscular strength and power, increase in bone mineral bone mineral density, an improvement in body composition, an increased sports performance, and lastly, an increased resistance to injury. As for mental benefits, uh, improved con concentration. So for example, if I give a young athlete a set of directions, I want to make sure that they're able to follow those set of directions, and if they're able to comprehend what I'm telling them while doing their exercises, then they're, of course, increasing their concentration on what they're actually doing. As for plyometrics, plyometrics are often coupled with resistance training and it's actually kind of in the same boat in regards to a controversy with young athletes. It said that uh, plyometrics is often detrimental to them just because of the amount of stress placed on their body from jumping and hopping, but it has not been proven yet that it, ha that it is a detriment. It shows that uh, possible uh, playground activities like hopscots or jump rope are similar activities to plyometrics. So if individuals are out, young individuals are out on the playground doing these types of activities, then how come they're not getting injured while doing the, while participating in hopscot or, or jump rope? And then possible benefits that come from plyometrics improve movement biomechanics, increase functional ability, and then decrease in the sports related injuries. So along with resistance training, since they are growing up, since they haven't hit puberty yet, or they're going through puberty, possible um, motor abilities are increased. So for example, coordination is increased due to the number of motor units and muscle fibers being increased. But since they are resistance training, they're trying to develop they're developing more more strength, which makes sure that um, there is an increase in motor units and muscle fibers, which will allow an improvement in sports performance. And then as for the strength differences in boys and girls in resistance training, there has been no shown 
information that resistance training in males and females are um, to, in puberty. Once they hit puberty, then there will be a difference. But until puberty, there is no difference between the individuals and strength training. But once puberty is hit, strength development is due to body age, body size, physical um, activity, and then various stages of growth. As we all know, males have an increase in power, or have more power than females, and then girls show no little to um, natural improvements while growing up until they hit puberty. Um, and then going back to strength gain versus hypertrophy gains, uh, that's going to come along from this neuromuscular adaptation. This is the most important adaptation that our body will take on, and it's the initial adaptation from any kind of resistance training. Uh, so athletes and young individuals that begin a resistance training program, they'll see these, they'll have, this will happen to them first. Um, and what it is is just an ad adaptation to, to overcome the initial stress of uh, weight. And it allows for a reduction in injury and an increase in athletic performance. As Jason mentioned, um, there's a, a great amount of injuries in females and specifically in the knee injuries, soccer and basketball players. Um, so by training the neuromuscular adaptations system, they'll be able to decrease the risk of injury. Um, I believe that the strengths outweigh the benefit, or strengths outweigh the detriments in this activity. I believe that resistance training is more beneficial than not being able to partake in any kind of training. And references. Good. So what if you have a kid that is brand new to lifting and so you're probably just going to let him do the bar, right? Like, I would have him initially start with his body weight. His body weight? Yeah. Since, okay. he, since he's really not having any kind of physical activity, like this, if he's beginning to start with uh, resistance training, I'd have him begin with his body weight since that's the initial start. Um, and once he's able to do whatever I'm trying to have him do, then you can incorporate uh, dumbbells and then go to the barbell. So if, okay, if it's squats, okay, squats, just, I mean, have him out in front, just going down. If that's too easy, put a five pound dumbbell in front of him. So it'd be a front squat with the elbows high. Do you still down. set them at the eight to 12 rep though? Or what do you do with them? Because what if it's a kid that can just squat all day? Do you just keep giving him more weight or? No, you just keep him at the eight to 10 rep. What age should you, or when's the soonest you can start doing this? Well, there is no minimum age. With the body weight? With the, bo with the body weight? Um, I've seen up to seven years of age. So a yeah. 12-year-old? So 12 12-year-old, 12 they should be able to do uh, at maybe, least dumbbells and then go up to barbell. And that is the ball. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's not going to be detrimental to the growth plate at all? As long as they don't injure it. Um, and that just comes from supervision and proper progression throughout the client or farm. Yeah. Is there a specific height for the plyometrics for you, or is it just not for all together? Um, they just outright avoid it all together. Uh, I know that so I've seen, from personal experience, I've seen them do it as close as seven. Um, but yeah, it, there was. I mean, there is no type of eye or anything associated with it. Do you think you should stretch for plyometrics if you're training on that, or is that considered a... I think that, that's, for me, I think that's considered a warm-up. <coughs> Since technically it is uh, jumping or hopping movement, so that would be considered a dynamic movement. How often would you need to have your youth athletes, or let's say whoever you're training, do these type of exercises for them to be able to see that benefit? So, like plyometrics or just any kind of resistance? Just like the, any type of resistance. Well, like I said, there's, they need to make sure they're doing it two, three times a week. Okay. Uh, just because if they do it more than that, then there's a the potential to injure the growth plate, have lower back injuries, and shoulder injuries. Okay. So being able to space the time differently, 
uh, allows them for a greater rest period so that they can like every other day so that they can improve their strength needs. Anybody else? Good. Yeah.